Yes. Good morning, lady, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Emma Thompson, and with me today are Tyler Barker, Kara Hanley, and Clay Gruber, and we make up your PR plan team for the National Naval Officers Association. After we discussed with NNOA some of the challenges they're facing with uh, membership, demographics, and just their overall um, brand awareness, we conducted research in order to um, develop our PR plan, which we're presenting to you today. Um, we started with our online survey to establish that baseline of how NNOA members um, measure, how we measure the sentiment they feel towards the organization, how they engage with the organization, um, their involvement and their identity as well. I'm gonna quick share my screen for you all um, so that you can kind of see what we measured. So in, for each statement in that survey, they could choose to strongly disagree, which was given a one, all the way up to strongly agree, which was given a five. And that's what you can see the averages from those questions on that graph. We also split it up by generation so that you could see your members um, that were from the millennial generation to the generation X to the baby boomers and how they kind of how their identity felt with uh, your organization and how they felt involved with the organization as well. Um, as you can see, the averages are all very high. So all the NNOA members feel like they are a part of the organization and really feel that they can identify with you all. Um, but some things I do want to point out are like for word of mouth or how NNOA members speak about the organization, the millennials speak the most about it. As far as identifying with the organization and interest in NNOA in general, uh, the baby boomer generation actually was the highest so that we thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, we also conducted qualitative um, research as well. So our interviews, we did five interviews, Emma, one with the Emma, NNOA Emma. and then four with non-members. Um, those were three JOs and then 106. Some of the key findings from um, our interviews was that word of mouth is really how uh, people hear about NNOA. Um, one thing that came up also was kind of the difficulty in overcoming the assumption that um, the organization is just for minority officers. As far as the interviews with the non-members, um, there was very low awareness of NNOA in general. Only three of, so out of the four, one actually had not heard of the organization. Three had heard of them, um, have heard of you all, but they didn't know much more than just the name. They didn't know about your mission or all the awesome stuff you're doing. Um, as far as when we asked them why they would join an organization such as this, they said that they would want to uh, be a part of something that gives back to the community. The only reason they would be deterred uh, from an organization like NOAA is that they um, would feel like they, uh, they wouldn't want other people to associate um, potentially uh, different if they didn't feel like they could really resonate with the group. So they wanna make sure there's a connection and that their, their beliefs were the same as the NNOA beliefs. Um, while these were just our key findings, our entire formative research uh, report is actually in our PR plan. So you can read through that whole thing and see the different medians and standard deviations for each question and the different demographics of the respondents as well. Um, we also recommend, we did the pre-campaign survey. We recommend you do the exact survey post-campaign so that you can compare those exact um, questions that we asked them as well. So after the whole entire research phase, we shift into a planning portion of the PR plan. This is really charting the course, setting goals, developing strategies, defining objectives. So to talk about the first three goals, you brought one of those goals to us, which was strengthening brand awareness. So that is definitely our top goal here. And then we had two other goals, which was empowering the NNOA chapters through national guidance and then responsibly growing NNOA to more accurately represent the diversity that the organization espouses. And moving on to that, um, for the strategies, we developed nine separate strategies to support these goals. I'm gonna talk about three here just for the sake of time, but um, digital presence, enhancing the digital presence of NNOA. This is optimizing your website and newsletter, expanding social media management, potentially doing a podcast. We'll get into that more in the tactics phase, but all of this develops into a larger strategy of optimizing digital presence to further your message. The next one I'd like to talk about is offering value to the media. Um, when we did our content analysis in the research phase, we realized that uh, not too many media outlets are talking about NNOA. I know your members are very um, well written and they are contributing articles to different publications. However, those don't always have a 
direct tie to NNOA. They might not list it in their biographical data. They might be writing about an issue that NNOA cares about, but they're not linking um, anything in their article to actual NNOA. So this is going to be a more active media approach, um, developing a media relations program so that you can start to agenda build um, and try and talk to reporters about what you want to address and then they can help set an agenda for you. Um, so that's something that we're going to make some recommendations on in the tactics section. Then we have a whole entire media handbook in the appendix as well. And then a third strategy I want to talk about is employing your brand ambassadors. As Emma mentioned, you have an incredible, passionate uh, membership base, and they are very enthusiastic about sharing the word. We saw that with the word of mouth data. Now we're going to take that to another level through digital means and through influencers. So using social media to really help with the brand awareness in the brand ambassador route, but also targeting influential members of your membership base to go and influence their commands, their peers, and challenging people to step up to the plate and really um, start showing actions and not just words to how much they care about diversity in the C services. Um, so moving on to our publics, we developed a couple of different key publics here. So we had the non-member junior officers who you are trying to bring in to your membership base. You have your current members who you have to keep communicating with to make sure they understand everything that's available to them within your organization for their professional development and why their membership matters. You have potential officers, which is both enlisted and midshipmen and officer candidates. Um, you're going to communicate with them in two different ways because enlisted officer candidates or people who are interested in it are going to receive information a little bit differently than someone who's at the Naval Academy or in an ROTC program. And then you have potential recruits who um, might fall into that high school demographic, early 20s, might not know that they're really interested in becoming a Naval officer yet. And one important public I think here that I really want to delve into a little bit more is white senior officers. We understand from our research and from the data that we pulled that the majority of people who hold senior officer positions in the C services are white males. And to really um, get after the influence that those people have in decision making processes and command influence with these organizations that they're commanding, that's really a demographic that we need to get on board and to help them understand the value that NNOA brings to the C services, why diversity matters in the C services and what they can do at their level to help us. So um, identifying those publics, we came up with a couple objectives. All of those objectives are on page 26 through 28 of the PR plan, but I'm going to talk about the four that I think um, stand out as really emphatic ones here. So we really want to increase the NNOA membership base by 50% by January 1st, 2022. So this is going to be, you know, increasing that number. Um, but also another goal we have is decreasing the number of people leaving because that's how you get true growth. You're growing and you're not losing anybody at the same time too. So decreasing the number of people leaving per month by 50% by January 1st, 2022. We also wanna increase the mentions of NNOA in the media um, by 50% by the same time frame, January 1st, 2022. And then we also really wanna increase the memberships of 06 to 010 in the C services in NNOA um, by 5%. We think that's a smart, a specific, measurable, attainable, um, realistic and timely goal here that we can really try and get more senior officers to become members of NNOA. So we outlined strong messages for all of these objectives, all of these publics. You can read those pages 28 through 31, um, but I want to shift it over into the implementation phase now. All right, so moving on, uh, as Kara mentioned, to the implementation phase. Uh, so we listed seven tactics that'll get you guys kind of from your strategies and these objectives. Uh, to successful execution. Uh, and those tactics uh, start, as we mentioned, in the implementation phase on page 34. Um, I'll just hit on a few of the, the highlights, um, and then we can definitely save some more of the Q&A discussion for some more of those kind of specific tactics. Um, the first one I want to talk about is the uh, there's an email to senior leaders. Um, so Kara mentioned about trying to reach especially the C service um, flag level 06 to 010 senior officers, especially senior white officers. Um, so in our appendix uh, A, actually the first one, we have uh, an email from you, Admiral Harris, to uh, the, the C service leaders, uh, broken out a little more tailored specifically towards uh, different communities within the Navy uh, and then also the Marine Corps. Um, just basically this email is kind of a call to action is how we see it. Uh, so uh, as we go through it, you'll see kind of, you know, what, what our, our goal is when we're sending this email. But what we want to do is get our senior leaders uh, aware of in and away, uh, aware of you know what you guys offer to the fleet, uh, to these senior officers, and especially what you offer to your junior officers with your mentorship and professional development. 
Um, so the email is a call to action to these officers as well to, you know, be part of the discussion, you know, be part of the organization itself and also part of the discussion. Uh, I think the virtual symposium that, that we saw was a big part of that is getting a lot of those uh, senior C service leaders to, to mention it in a way to, you know, bring you guys into these discussions, especially, uh, you know, in our current climate. Uh, we also want them to bring their wardrooms with them. Uh, so, you know, when they start mentioning in a way to kind of talk about in a way, like you said, word of mouth a couple of times is a really big deal for you guys in terms of recruitment and, and retention. Um, so getting that discussion from the two and three star level of the C services will definitely have a trickle down effect for the rest of um, the C service officers. Um, another tactic that we want to discuss is a brand book. And uh, we can go again, we can go a little more in depth in this, but what we're trying to do across the board, um, you heard us talk about you know, the national chapters and also all of your chapters kind of scattered throughout the world. Uh, the brand book kind of standardizes the way that you guys communicate with external media uh, and especially in the digital realm, right? So it, it talks very specifically about the logo, you know, the color scheme, uh, photo composition, a lot of those kind of specifics that give a lot of really good guidance to your junior chapters about, hey, here's what we want to be, like this is our brand, this is how we want to look, you know, when we talk to our external publics. Um, so that's a really good way for all of us to make sure that, you know, the NNOA brand is the same regardless of, of who's speaking on behalf of the organization. Another one is a newsletter. So we took a look at the Meridian that you guys post on your website. Uh, we think there's a lot of fantastic information on there. Um, and I know some of the early questions will be about uh, some of those essays and uh, uh, press releases that, that members within the organization write. Um, but we think that you guys need to, to make a little more frequently with this newsletter. Uh, so we recommend a monthly uh, and gearing a little more towards the um, accomplishments and um, stuff that the specific chapters are doing. Um, so we know that you guys do a birthday shout out, but we recommend, you know, promotions, job, um, you know, new jobs within the Navy, people that take command of a ship or take command of a squadron, uh, getting warfare pens, that kind of stuff. So I think if the national level can get a lot of those inputs from those uh, chapters, about what kind of things that their members are accomplishing. I think that'll go you know, a long way towards building that sense of community and that, that sense of family. Like, hey, you know, I don't know this person in another chapter, but I know they just put on a warfare pen and that's awesome. So I wanna kind of welcome them to that. Um, and then the final chapter that, or the final tactic that I wanna discuss right now, uh, Kara alluded to it a little bit with the uh, digital presence, is we built a social media calendar for you guys for all of 2021 that goes pretty much across the board. So we're talking LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, each month kind of has a loose theme about, you know, what kind of postings that you guys are doing. Um, and it's broken down by Monday, Wednesday, Friday postings. And again, we can go a little more in depth into all of this, but what we want to do is really uh, get more of an engagement with your social media followers. So, you know, putting out press releases, putting out articles, information is great, but we really want to get that engagement. Um, from your Facebook followers, from your Twitter followers, you know, people on LinkedIn. Um, so the way that we'll go over the course of the year is just kind of keep drumming up support, right? Each month is kind of a different theme of, you know, hey, what does in a way mean to me? What's the history of the organization? Um, you know, some professional development tips along with, hey, send us some photos of, you know, when you were on deployment, you know, what, what, what how has in a way helped you across, you know, your service? So we think that getting that engagement and building that up will just continue to build that word of mouth. Um, so that's another big thing that we recommend is a social media calendar. So once you implement this plan, you gotta be able to evaluate it, right? So you gotta figure out how you're doing. Um, so we've got, uh, for each objective that we have listed there for you, we've got evaluation criteria for each one of those. Um, so uh, for example, we'll take the first objective that we have for you, which is the increasing the in a way membership by 50% by January 1st of 2022. We use that date, January 1st, 2022, because that kind of starts your 50 year anniversary timeframe. Uh, we figured that's a good time to start. So uh, what the number lo actually looks like, you want to know what the 50% increases actually look like, it's in the evaluation criteria part. So 50% increase in membership looks like 1,532 total members by January 1 of 2022. Now, which is great, you can evaluate that by looking at the numbers in 2022, uh, but to evaluate it once you get to the halfway point, you're looking at around 1276 uh, to do that. So 
if you're at 1276 or more, hey, you're doing great. Keep doing what you're doing. If you're not, we've got some criteria or some recommendations in there for you to, hey, we're, you're below where you need to be. Here's how we think could help you fix it. One of those specifically with membership is uh, what I call a who's your one campaign. So yeah, appeal to your members and say, who's one person in your command that you can invest some time in um, and bring them to the next meeting, bring them to the next project that we do, get them involved and then push them towards eventual membership. Uh, so that's just kind of an example of how the evaluation uh, section can help you evaluate how you're doing halfway and then fix it if you're not where you need to be. Uh, and then going into the recommendations uh, that we have for you. So we got eight of them in there. I'll talk about one specifically, uh, and it is increasing community services, uh, community service projects at the chapter level. Um, and this is for a couple of reasons. So we talked about building the agenda with the media. So getting in way out there, getting them, getting them seeing that they're giving back to the community. You know, everybody's wearing their fancy shirts with, you know, um, uh, get your career underway with NOA, awesome slogan on the back of the shirt, you know, brand awareness. Uh, they're giving back to the community um, and you got people, you know, your own members out there taking pictures and doing interviews and taking videos and then posting that stuff on social media. And then you're, you're, you're building um, your relationship with the media and then you're, you're, you're pitching it to them. Like, Hey, we got this great project coming up. Why don't you come out and cover us? Or if they didn't come cover you, send them the link, send them the big information subsidy that you've created for them and say, here's everything great that we did. By the way, here's what NNOA does. You've got all your members who've memorized their little elevator speech on what NNOA does and can really push the message of NNOA. So that's the first half of why we think increasing community service at the chapters is important. And then second, uh, you can incentivize it for new members for NNOA. Um, because the more community service that you do, the more hours you get towards your outstanding volunteer service medal. Um, so that's how you can incentivize it for individual members. Like, hey, come give back to the community. By the way, we're a safe space for uh, diversity uh, conversations, which is, which is awesome and fantastic in itself. But we do community service, which is great for the community, and you get a medal out of the thing too, uh, which is pretty cool. And you can track that at the chapter level. Somebody PCSs, they've still got access to all their hours and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then finally here, uh, let's talk about money. Um, so we got to, we got, we got to kind of a mock-up budget here. Um, and we'll just talk about the monthly budget because annual budget is just the monthly budget times 12. Uh, but you're looking at for what we recommend around $2,500 uh, uh, a month. But most of that you can see is because we're recommending hiring a social media manager, a freelancer, um, to come on and take on your social media and your branding. So we average that at about $60 per hour and 40 hours per month. Um, is what we think. And you would want to hire someone be, because a way around the $2,400 a month is just get a motivator who's loving social media as a member and do it for free. Um, but you will still have some opportunity loss there because uh, you're paying someone that is their job for 40 hours a month to take care of you and they do nothing else. So that's what we would recommend them as well. The rest of the stuff is kind of a la carte. If you want to, you don't have to have any of it if you don't want it. There is a free method out there uh, like Hootsuite. We recommend it because it gets you $65 a month, gets you up to 10 social media pages that you can manage unlimited scheduling and you get access to their analytics, which is huge. Um, but the free plan, you get, you get three social media pages, up to 30 uh, schedules that you can do, but you don't get their analytics. So all of these things, there's, there's free plans in there uh, that you can do, but you're gonna lose uh, just enough to, to make you really effective. Um, so that kind of com completes what we had to, to talk to you guys about and we'll spend the rest of the time going over uh, questions and answers.